just do one thing, but do it well. All right, so I know you're on pins and needles, edge of your seats. What is the one pattern? Well, I've given it a lot of thought, and I think that Landry Light pullbacks might be that one pattern, especially if you're combining all these other things that I just said into them. And that's where, again, you get better. It's, it's deliberate practice, okay? And who is it talks a lot about that? Malcolm Gladwell. And there's another individual that, that he had a bit of a riff with. But if you read both of these individuals, you'll see they're both kind of on the same page. But deliberate practice is not just going through the motions. It's looking to get better. And that's one of the secrets to success in life is deliberate practice. And through deliberate practice, you're going to see acceleration, persistency, all these other trend qualifiers for the trend and few or none against the trend okay so here you have the 30 ema and notice you have all this landry light as again illustrated below so you have about 35 bars of landry light and you go down to zero when it intersects the line here and that completes the landry light pullback okay so svm we just looked at that in addition to all those great things i said was also a landry light pullback TARS, again, nice uh, persistency, nice acceleration. And this is one, again, that I, I would have been shocked if it didn't work. And obviously, I can't publish this and go, I know this one's going to work. Because I've been dead wrong sometimes in the past. It's like there is a randomness to the outcome. But as a general statement, when you're finding stocks that are that just go up day after day after day. This is one that just kept coming up in my momentum list every night, every night, every night, every night. I'm like, as soon as this thing sets up, and it was killing me. I watched it from much lower levels. It just never set up. And my methodology is not a perfect one. Nobody has a perfect methodology, by the way. And it won't catch every setup or every uh, every trend, I should say. But a lot of these stocks will pull back nicely to the 30 EMA. Now, years ago, I used to use the 20 EMA, and I'm going to touch upon that in one second. And in case you're, you've are you been around for a while, you're just checking back in. I'm amazed, by the way, and you know, I guess it's being, I'm being a narcissist here, but I'm, I'm amazed at the number of people that will follow me for a little while and then go off for 10 years or more and chase rainbows and then come back and realize that, geez, I sure did waste a lot of time doing that. This trend following moron stuff can actually work and it can actually work quite well. But anyway, so if you're from back in the day and you're just coming back and you're like, well, it's this Landry Light pullback. It looks a lot like Kiss My Goodbye. Well, I think it was in layman's, I called it Kiss My Goodbye. And back then I was using a 20 EMA. And in more recent times, as I've said quite often, I've kind of fallen in love with the 30 EMA. And I know you want to party with me. And as I often preach, one small rule keep you out of a lot of trouble in stocks, and crypto, and commodities, and Forex, and whatever the market comes along, would be to never, never, except in maybe some rare cases, buy a market that is below the 30 EMA. And that'll keep you out of a lot of trouble, especially in more recent times in crypto and the SHYT shit coins. But you can see we had 60 bars of Landry Light. That's a beautiful trend. Again, it was killing me watching this thing go up day after day. And then finally it pulls back and you have zero when it intersects the moving average. Landry Light is just simply lows are greater than the moving average. That's it. And the little histogram below counts the number of bars of Landry Light. It's not magnitude, okay? It's not like it's a moving average uh, convergence or something upon the price and you know, and some of that might have some merit. I've tried a lot of that stuff, couldn't make it work, but maybe you can make it work. But before you do that, just look at something like Ledger Light pullbacks and think long and hard about that and maybe just trade that for now until you get, get your reps in, like Hal was talking about the aforementioned client, he was having trouble getting getting his reps in. Well, now's not a market to get your reps in. And I'll touch upon that in, in one second too. But anyway, so that TARS was a Landry Light pullback. The KNF didn't have the EMA, but eventually it did before it triggered. If you squint your eyes, you see this little 
orange 4203. So that's a 30 EMA and that's where that is. And it did pull back to the 30 EMA based on that. So technically that's also a Landry light pullback. So nearly all of these, with the exception of NNE, which did not have a Landry light pullback, I'm sorry, we shouldn't have a moving average because it wasn't public long enough. So that's, let me just see how many that was. One, two, three, four. I think it was about five stocks missing. So four out of five were Landry Light pullbacks. Now I know the MME was only 20 bars, but it's still a, a Landry Light pullback nonetheless. And again, as I said a second ago, the original pattern was with the 20, and then that kind of morphed into the 30. By the way, the the Landry Light came from years ago. And let's see if this is one. It's hard to see it here, but this is this is one bar here. But let's do it where it's more cleanly. Just imagine, just like the TFM 10% system, you need two bars of Landry Light. So bar one, bar two, little system would be to buy above this high, okay? And that's the 220 EMA breakout system, which could also be the 230 EMA breakout system. And that's a silly little system. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't rush out and trade it mechanically, but I'm just looking at this chart for the first time at least with, with through that lens and you can see back here it never got away from that moving average okay and then it finally gets away from it and then in this particular case and believe me breakouts won't always work that's why i'm a pullback player because pullbacks will work more often than breakouts at least statistically because a lot of breakouts are false especially nowadays that everybody's got a computer on their desk and they can see the breakouts maybe years ago uh, even even uh, in more somewhat more recent modern times, this is when the turtles were out there, breakouts probably didn't fail as much. They had a very simple breakout system. They were buying 20-day highs. That's pretty much it. With a few caveats. And they absolutely printed money until they didn't. But that's another story altogether. But anyway, you could see it broke away nicely, nice landry light, and then it pulls back to the 20 EMA. So if you need one pattern to trade, it would be Landry Light pullbacks. And by the way, as I said in that reply to this gentleman, find the one pattern, but then find all those characteristics, characteristics of other patterns that I like to trade, like the trade pivot pullback, an accelerated momentum strategy, and persistent pullbacks, and TKOs. Find all those little characteristics that are also Landry Light pullbacks. Jesse Livermore, I, I found this by accident while i was doing my i was actually asked to speak at a conference where the it's going to be like old school new school and i was asked to teach or preach or whatever teacher preacher lecture on old school they wanted me to cover jesse livermore so i'm honored but he once said it was never my thinking that made the big money it was always a sitting that's not the one i wanted okay here there it is <laughs> my kunash just slipped out there it is nope that's still not it money's made okay these other two are pretty good too okay Money's made by sitting, not trading. That, that's a good one. We can use that one too. You always get something good out of Livermore. Different ways of, of looking at that one. One is once you catch a trend, hang on. Okay. Um, doesn't happen often, but every now and then we'll ride out a trend for about a year, sometimes two. Doesn't happen that often again. But we will stay with positions a, a fairly long while. And we've got a couple in the portfolio we've been in for quite a while. And knock on wood, we survived this little downturn not that there's any guarantee we'll, we will continue to survive it but so far so good but anyway the point i wanted to get to here when i grabbed the slide i just saw this part this is the one this is what i want don't give me timing give me time okay and you can read into this in, in, in various different ways but once you capture the elusive trend okay Dave, stop making it sound so elusive well it is okay it's streaky as i often preach You'll print money and then you go back to sitting on your hands and waiting and grinding it out and getting chopped up, chopped up. And right about the time you're ready to quit, markets take off again. Don't give me time and give me time, okay? Give me time to wait in less than ideal conditions. Again, now is not the time to get your reps in trading. Now is the time to sharpen your stone, okay? Is that the right way of saying it? Sharpen your knife, sharpen the stone. But anyway, don't give me time and give me time. So give yourself time to wait for conditions. And I know it's hard. We put all these pressures on ourselves 
and we have this time acrasia thing time um how does that what's the what's the time i forget that the word i'm looking for but we view time in, in in certain ways and i think we put this pressure on ourselves the market is not doesn't give you a paycheck and livermore actually talks a lot about that too and you you just sometimes have to wait for things i mean i wish the market did give me a paycheck like i said a couple of weeks ago when i was talking about all the extraneous influences like i'm just getting hit with a shit ton of expenses and in the meantime you know daughter's calling up uh hey uh i miss you guys can you send me a plane ticket it's like oh, okay you know <laughs> whatever but anyway so give yourself time time to learn don't waste time chasing rainbows okay once you have something that's pretty solid and you've done the research and you've had at least 100 setups some that works some that didn't you played devil's advocate and all the things i just said then yeah as i said earlier slowly add to that and maybe do a, a tiny bit of that grail hunting if that's what you want to do but don't get caught in that maze i often do a presentations where i show the the trader's journey which is very similar to the hero's journey right and you can end up in that all is lost moment quite easily and you get off your little trader's journey and then go on that grail hunt and that can delay your success between one and 20 years i don't want to call anybody out but i've had somebody who emailed me for 20 20 years and they still don't get it they're still off chasing rainbows instead of trading landry light pullbacks or doesn't have to be my pattern because he's 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 never given me a dime as a client. <laughs> so go off and go off and do your own thing, but find one little simple things. You've been doing this or trying to do this for 20 something years. Just find one thing and do that one thing. Reminds me of City Slickers when uh Curly figures out the secret of life. Curly's the old gristled, um, I'd say an old salt, but he's an old cowboy. And he had the city slickers, which are up there to try to figure out life and take a break. And they're like, what's the secret of life? It's like your finger, you know, he holds up one finger. It's like, well, one thing, you know, just do one thing, but do it well, okay? So why are you waiting to get your reps in? By the way, get your reps in, in case you don't know, is your trades getting, you have to get your reps in. And one of the things that I suggested to, to Hal earlier was a trade crypto. And right now, a lot of that trading would be breakout trading. And right now, crypto is actually not working. But a while back, crypto was blowing and going and it was a great way to get trades and you were getting three or four trades a day even position trading you hit the ipts and your money management and it was all kind of rocking with docking right well the the crypto markets go from bull market to bear market the cycles are just like nuts okay it, it happens within a, a month or three weeks and sometimes one week or one day so i wouldn't I wouldn't bet the farm in crypto. Just put a token amount in those those accounts if you want to do that, and get the. That's one way to kind of get the reps in. But as Hal pointed out, that's mostly breakout stuff. At least it has been in more recent times. So yeah, so that's that that's not working either. But while you're waiting to get your reps in, don't trade to be trading. Okay, you want to study success and failures. Okay, and go through those archives. Not that I'm the grand poobah. Believe me, when you start going through your archives, you're going to see everything warts at all. You're like, boy, these are some great trades. And it's like, why the hell did he do this? You know, when you reach a point where you're like, why the hell did you do this? And, and feel free to call me on it. You know, I might look at it and go, yeah, shit, I don't know. You know, I don't know what I was thinking. Maybe I felt pressure to put a, a setup out there for the clients. Maybe I was bored because I hadn't had a trade in a while. I don't know. You know, maybe there's a reason why I picked that crappy setup. Or maybe it was a fantastic looking setup and we're seeing things differently. I don't know. But go through those and then really study one pattern, as I said. And while you're getting your reps in, study trading psychology and, and neurology. And, and one thing I was thinking about right before we went live is, is the great thing about the, the neurology is we all have a similar, uh, a, the same, I should say, uh, abnormal brain, right? We all have the same sort of brain, unless you have an abnormal brain, I should say. And that all works the same kind of way. The amygdala has us like freaking out. Everything's a big, huge deal. Everything is going to kill us. And that keeps us alive. Because if you didn't have that fast acting amygdala, back in the caveman times, you'd get eaten by, you would get eaten by a saber toothed tiger. You hear like a, like a stick crack or something like, oh, I better get the F out of here, you know? 
But in nowadays, that freaking out, sitting in front of a screen, freaking out when the market's going to get you, that doesn't do you any good. And that that fast acting amygdala fires up the rest of your brain, starts pumping adrenaline into your system and all this other bad stuff like cortisol. And that can really, really muck things up. So the great thing about studying neurology is you don't get, unless it's really directly tied to trading, but you don't get as much of the of the bad information because it's talking about something that's a little bit more of an exact science as opposed to trading. The trading psychology book, sometimes they'll talk about things again that that simply don't work or they'll talk about like it's it's a it's a fixed thing you do, push a button, get a peanut. And as you know, the markets don't work that way. And if you've been trading for a while, of course you know that. If not, I just told you. And maybe study a little personal development. Like I said, Malcolm Gladwell, good stuff to read when it comes to the liver practice. I used to read a lot, everything that he put out. I've, I've haven't kept up with him in more recent years. Uh, what's his name? Irely. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Israeli guy. A uh, very interesting story uh, with this guy. Uh, he got blew up by a flash grenade. And um, very interesting. Uh, what's his book he, where he talks about uh, the, the the pain he went through and his psychological makeup to get him through this, through the shots he had to take and everything. And uh, very, very uh, tough situation. I think he had a, a like a bad form of hepatitis from all the skin grafts or everything and and his personal journey through all that but uh he's a really good he's really good when it comes to psychology and uh what's his name the Dilbert guy had um he had a pretty good book a while, a while back how to fail at everything and still succeed so so read you know maybe kind of go off a little bit of a tangent master key system that's a little it, it, you go to davelander.com books to read uh books dash two dash read for uh, almost nearly all of these uh master key system it's a little esoteric it's kind of like the science of getting rich by waddles master key system handle or handle or something it, it's some of those really old ones like that are in public domain but i'd like to just have a hard copy myself um but i'm telling you this in case you wanted to read them for free so study some of that personal development i'm I'm kind of into esoteric a little bit, you know, I kind of go like, yeah, right. But it's funny, like when I actually do what they say to do, like affirmations, it, it kind of, it almost scares me a little bit because some of these things do come true. So just find a way to, to keep yourself busy in the interim. And, you know, uh, now that I'm back in the gym in a, in a serious way, I, I always joke about my annual workout. I haven't missed one in years, but I actually... It's going to be hard for me. I know I missed one. Uh, I think I had a cold a while back, and I was pretty snotty, and I, I didn't want to um, infect the gym. So I think I missed one or two days with that, although I really wanted to go. But I was like, uh, you know, they, they're going to notice that I'm kind of snotty, especially since I've made friends with a lot of people there. But anyway, long story endless, I don't think I could handle this business if I, if I wasn't exercising every day. I don't know. You're probably thinking – Big Dave's telling me about exercise. You know, look at this guy. But, you know, yeah, I still got a bit of a, still pretty big around the middle, but um, I'm also pretty huge too, believe it or not. 